Bonjour, sweet. Comment ça va? We are back on the road again <laughs> in beautiful Quebec. I can't see much. It's foggy and rainy, but uh, anyway, it's still a great place. It is a beautiful place. If you haven't been here, we're in the, like by Montebello. We're heading to Mont Tremblant. Yeah, beautiful part of the country. And we're in the uh, new Kia Forte. 2019, all new. Let's start ground up, the actual chassis. Yeah, so this car is actually a little bit longer. It's 80 millimeters longer. That's a full eight centimeters, which is quite a bit bigger. And you see it on the outside. It looks, to me, when we're driving along next to one, is it uh, almost looks like a mid-sized car. And like most new cars now, this is a new platform. It is made with more high tensile steel, which makes it stiffer. And more rigid. And, and lighter. And all of those things, <laughs> uh, but longer and wider, uh, 20 millimeters wider. And you know what? Um, it's quite nice uh, to sit in the back seat. I tried it, you tried it, yep. and there's plenty of room back there. Now, this is the dimensions are almost almost identical, really, to, to the big two competitors, mm -hmm. which is the Honda Civic and the Toyota Corolla. Yeah, and those cars, have had such a strong following for many many years and here we are with this uh, this new car and I got to say that on the styling I think they did a really good job yeah they did the styling really good but now we'll talk about that in a second okay. first of all let's talk about the drive because you've been going on and on and on about this drive okay so the engines carried over it's still the two liter with 147 horsepower runs on the more efficient Atkinson cycle, which is way too hard to try and explain. Just the more efficient way that the engine works. But the big news is, and I know Brian, a lot of people are gonna say, okay, you can't say that it's, it's better, but it's actually, in my opinion, it's better. They put, they put, wait for it. A CVT. A CVT in this car, but they don't call it just a CVT. Oh, there's one going by now. Hello, Kia Forte. Uh, local Quebecers speeding. Yeah. Um, they don't call it uh, a CVT. They call it an inter intelligent variable transmission. Yes. So don't pause the video or go to another video because <laughs> I know some of you, as soon as we say CVT, they go, uh, uh, we, we, I stopped like watching that. Uh, barf, right? But what they've done, most CVTs in this size of class, or almost all of them I can think of, they use a belt driven system. Yeah. And this one has. This is a chain driven. And the way that they've made it is that it just grabs a whole lot better, like even out of the pocket at a stoplight. And right now we're cruising along at 90 kilometers an hour. Let's change the drive mode first of all. We've got normal. Yeah. Let's go to sport here. So we're in sport and automatically the ratio changes. So we're doing 90 kilometers an hour. Put my foot to it. It drops down just like a regular automatic. It's uncanny. It's very, very positive. Even in the passenger seat, you can feel it kick. Yeah. And so, CVT, yes. I'm here to tell you, 99.99% of the people who take this for a test drive will never know. That's how good it is. Key is calling this, the Forte is, it's a compact with no compromises. Well, mm -hmm. you don't, there's not a lot of compromise in this transmission whatsoever. Plus you get 17% better fuel economy than the outgoing model. That's a huge improvement, especially the car's bigger. It's got lots of content and it's more fuel efficient. 17% is a marked improvement. Oh, huge, huge, huge. Now let's talk about more of the handling. What do you think? Okay, so over the years, uh, Kia and Hyundai, with their electric power steering, uh, initially years ago was crappy. They were. And they have improved them now to the point where, just like the CVT, that's a no compromise. The steering is as well. It's very direct, it's good on center, it's got good feedback. All the things that were bad about the old systems, that's gone as well. What I love, Brian, I know you're such a, a finicky guy when it comes to the steering wheel. And Brian makes a good point. What do you say about the steering wheel? It's what you touch the most. And you know, even the cheapest cars or the most inexpensive should have the best steering wheels because that just makes the car feel so much better. So what do they do? On every single model, even the base $16,500, you get a leather wrapped heated steering wheel on every single trim. That is good. That is really, really good. I'm a big fan of, of, of heated steering wheels. Also, you get the leather uh, cover on the uh, shifter here, standard equipment if you get the CVT, and you get standard heated seats as well. Yeah. So what do you think of the way it looks? I like the looks of it a lot, especially the back end. Of course, you know, we're traveling with a bunch of other Kia Fortes, and when they're going by, or if you're behind one, that back end, it, it, it's really, really... Uh, Substantial. It, it looks a lot more premium and a lot more complex than, than a lot of compact cars. So 
I think what they've done with the styling is that they, they've, they've kind of grounded the bottom. It goes out a little bit at the bottom. They've added in a few accents here and there to make the car look more anchored and larger at the back. And if you get the EX trim and above, which is what they're really targeting people to do, you get that sort of gloss black trim on the bottom of the bumpers, front and back, which, as you mentioned, makes it feel and look more rich, right? Yeah. So why don't you let me drive and we can talk about pricing on the trims now. Okay. Easy, easy there. See, see the way it gets right out of the pocket. Oh, yeah. Let's just let it go. Let it go. So it changes gears. It's it's pretty good, isn't it? It's really really good. <laughs> you know, if you if you didn't know, a lot of people might actually just mistake this for a regular conventional. I, I automatic guarantee you, they, they'll not know. Most people will drive this, and the dealer will say to them, "Oh, it's got an IVT," and they'll go, "What's that?" They don't care. Yeah. They just care to get better mileage. Let's talk about value and Kia, mm -hmm. like. You get a lot of car for this. Uh, what does it start at? Okay, so at sixteen and a half thousand dollars, you get the manual transmission base model with fifteen-inch steel wheels. No one's really going to buy that. That's you know what that car is targeted at? Quebec. Yes. That's and right. in Quebec, it's the one part of Canada where they buy the least expensive cars with the base trim. That's where it'll sell with right? air conditioning. And it comes with air conditioning. But really, they want you to go up to what's the EX trim, which is around twenty-one thousand dollars. And they've obviously done their research. They know that most people, if you're buying a Corolla or a Civic or an uh, Elantra or Elantra, they transact over twenty grand. So give people the car that they're going to pick anyway. Yeah. So for twenty grand. 21, you, 21. Is that it's 2998 or whatever, okay. so it's 21. Anyway, you get a ton. Standard on all though, heated steering wheel, like you yeah. mentioned, heated seats, Seat. and an eight inch display unit. Mm -hmm. Now that's standard even for the base model all right. the way up. Yeah, and it comes standard with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. That's right. And you know what? This has been a big differentiator with Kia early, early on. They were one of the first companies I can remember that ever put those two features, Apple and Android, in their head units. And you see their quality scores. They're right near the very top of JD Power and others, even Consumer Reports. And I think a big part of it is the ease of use because people are used to using their phone, right? Mm -hmm. So what else do you get? On the EX, you get the wireless charging pad, which I absolutely love. Now, you're just new to this because, you know, Apple is so far behind. Uh, the the, uh, the iPhone X was the first one to have the wireless charging. Do you like it now? You know what? I, I think it still charges a little slow for me. But, but what are you else he doing? I, I know, I know. You're driving. It's like you might as well be charging your phone. It's, it's not, not fast, but at least it's getting something. It's not a deal breaker. I do like the Apple CarPlay in almost all vehicles that I drive, mm -hmm. but one feature that you can get on this that doesn't come on the EX trim on the regular EX. You First of all, go there, there's a whole bunch of EX trims. There's yeah. EX, there's, there's EX Plus, EX Premium, I think. And EX the, something and else. And a Limited. I yeah. think we're in the Limited. But you have to go to almost the top trim to get the smart key, which gives you the smart trunk, which opens by itself when, you, uh, when you're when you in the proximity. Yeah, you get close to it, yeah. But it also gives you the push button start without having a key. And that is, if you've had this feature, once you have it, you really don't want to go back oh, to using oh, key. Okay, all right. Brian, would you give up the leather wrap steering wheel to get the, the automatic push button start? Ooh. Ooh, that's tough. I don't know, but you know what? I would give up. I would give up the Apple CarPlay or Android Auto to have the smart key. Really? Yep, I really would. But you wouldn't give up the steering wheel? Yeah, I like the steering wheel. <laughs> I really do like the steering wheel. So really what they want you to do is to buy the $21,000 one. And you know what? I could live with just that. Heated steering wheel, heated seats, uh, wireless charging, uh, and Apple and uh, Android. I'd be happy with that. Yeah, and you get you get 16 inch wheels as well. Yeah, when you go up to that one. And then the top wheels are, are, are 17. 17 inch, which, which we have right now. So this is the top trim. And so it has everything we said. Plus, well, it has a sunroof. You don't have to get the top trim for the sunroof. But uh, you get navigation, you get... Um, Heated rear seats and ventilated seats. That's true, yeah. So that's $28,000. Most people are not going to buy that one. Also, on the t on the higher up trims, you get the Uvo. Yes. And what U that? Uvo. Uvo. Uvo? Uvo. Uvo? Uvo. Uvo. I think it's Uvo. U V O. U V O. U V O. Okay, all right. Anyways, Uvo? Uvo. 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 The Uvo system. And what that allows you to do is you can remotely do things. You can start your car uh, in the wintertime, summertime. You can cool it. Cool it, heat it up, all sorts of different things. Unlock, you know, and all from your phone. And that feature plus uh, five-year roadside assistance you get for five years. 
Yeah, and that's a connected car, so that's the latest technology. I, I could care less about that stuff. I think it's kind of cool. Yeah, I could care less. I, I'd take the push button start over that. I would too as well, for sure, <laughs> for sure, yeah. But it, it is neat, it's just, it's taking the remote start even one step further. I know people are saying, you know, it's not it's not good for the car, not good for the environment, but you know what, for a couple minutes while you're getting your shoes on or whatever, it helps a little bit. To take the edge off yeah. on a cold day. So overall impressions, what do you think of this car? I'm very, very impressed. Uh, I think it's going to be a good competitor to uh, the, the Civic and also the, uh, the Corolla. Corolla. But what do you think of the other one? Uh, the Hyundai? Yeah. The Elantra? Um, now, they just done a facelift on that car, right? They just did a new front yeah. and rear to it. So this I, is the newer car. Yeah. I think this is the newer technology with the CVT, and I never, ever would have thought I would ever say get the one with the new CVT, but I think, you know, 17% improvement in fuel economy, it's a bit of a no-brainer because it doesn't drive like a CVT. It no. doesn't. So one thing that I think, I was talking to some other people earlier this week and I was telling them, I'm gonna go drive the new Forte. And there are still people out there and they're like, oh, well, you know, it's a it's a Korean car, mm -hmm. right? You know, like, and I think these people have been living with blinders on, you know, they're, they're just, they're in their own little world because they don't know what's happened in the last 20 years and how far uh, companies like Kia and Hyundai have come. Well, look at the quality scores. You know, Kia is the highest ranked mainline car brand for, I think, three years in a row. Four. Four years, Four years, in, years a row. in a row. And they actually got the overall number one spot, I think, two years in a row. They're, they're even top four, I think, with uh, G uh, Consumer Reports. They do things well. I mean, I think there's this big stigma. It takes years, if not decades, to build a, a, car, a car brand. Look how long it took for the Japanese luxury brands to become established. And some of them are still floundering around. Around. So, uh, I think they're doing so much right. Once you try or buy one, like some of my friends have, uh, they really stick to the brand because what Kia is trying to do, they're, they're not just trying to sell you a car just one time. They're trying to sell you the brand for the future as well. Yeah, and uh, they've been hinting that there's a lot more interesting, like the Stinger was such an interesting car last year, that there's other interesting cars like that coming. And you see a little bit of Stinger styling in here and I'm okay with that. They have a new, a new kind of a large SUV coming called yeah. the Telluride. And I think it's a body on frame SUV, right? Yeah, available with a V8. Wow, that's the first V8 they've ever had too. So yeah, interesting stuff's coming from Kia. So it's a brand on the rise, a brand to watch, and this is proof. What did they say again? It's a compact car with- Compact car, no compromise. I It ticks all the boxes for me. Yeah, really, it is a certain RPM that's really, it just tricks you. Yeah, no, it's good. There's I mean, a, you can still tell it's yeah. a CVT, but when for most of your driving, no, no issue. Yeah, uh, they did a really good job. Well, there's another edition of Sweet, Sweet and, and Sour. Sour. If you like the video, hit the thumbs up, and if you want to see more everyday reviews, hit the subscribe button. Thanks for watching. <laughs>